Encausticar lesson four, getting bigger. You're still using the Encausticar wax blocks, the small painting iron, and the sealed um, non-absorbent painting card, although bigger sizes will be used this time. Work area is roughly the same, always disposable paper underneath, painting card on top, waxes on one side, heated tools on the other in your working hand, and the tissues for cleaning and polishing at the back. Tape the cable in if you're left-handed so that it's out of your way and set it on low to start off with. These are standard. Now on small paintings, the iron very easily covers the card, so skies and the actual landscape itself, the darker colours underneath, are easy to put on. The dabbing is really done in just two or three strokes. And then the edge of the iron very easily running through that wax. So small cards are quite easy to work on and they're very good for learning your techniques on. A bit of detail with the birds and the flowers just to make it a bit more realistic and then lightly polishing remember once it's cool and you have your sort of greetings card postcard size. So those principles can now be developed into a larger A5 painting. This is one we're going to do. And here you just need to load the iron in the same sort of way. Lots of white wax because this is the light in the picture and then I'm using a dark blue, pink and a yellow to put the colours in. And you'll see I'm wiping down the card this time. But of course it doesn't cover the whole card. So you just load the iron in exactly the same way as you already have done. Same colours, blue, pink, yellow. And then start off where you finished off last time. And you complete the card but you get this line left across it. So in order to get rid of that, very simply on this size of sky, which fits across the iron, you just iron over it very very lightly try not to push too hard if you push too hard you can pull waxes off so just very very lightly and whilst you keep in this band form the colors won't mix very much but as soon as you start working off slightly to one side like I'm doing here then you start to create more texture uh, which is great for light and that's what I'm looking for always light so that there's somewhere for the eye to go now we're going to make mountains in this so you need liquid wax on this front triangle of the iron and we're going to use this edge the right hand edge which will be touching down on the card working from the left across to the right to spread the wax a bit like a knife spreading honey quite liquid honey or something like that you'll see that the wax is dribbling down um, the bottom of the iron here and then we're just working across in a sort of no, making a graph really pointed peaks and pointed valleys uh, as we work across. You might have to load it a couple of times like I've done here. Don't worry about the darkness in the middle, it'll all sort of come together in the end. Some green wax now and just very very lightly, almost not touching the iron onto the card, just onto the wax that's already there. Deposit some of it and then work a bit harder and a bit stronger going across. And then the dabbing. Now on bigger card this is more difficult so you have to put the bottom of the card against the iron and then sort of um, press it, flex it with your fingers behind so that the top edge of the iron doesn't actually touch the card. Your fingers are acting as the pivot that the card bends upon. Now same loading as for the sky but this time we're going to make water so it's a very narrow band if you notice, not very wide at all. And then keep the card edge vertical to the way that you drag the iron. So dragging down towards yourself is much easier than trying to drag across and just go very smoothly, very slowly, don't stop. One movement and you get a nice reflected sky watercolour. Now darker colours, this is for the foreground, got a spot on the water there but it doesn't matter. And here I'm using darker tones of what's in the sky which is um, darker blue, brown and a sort of um, cerise colour. And very very gently dab that onto the foreground. You don't really want the iron to remain in contact for very long otherwise you're going to melt the wax that's already there and then you'll lose the the clarity of the colour. So you want this to be nice and dark and strong. You see the bands of colour are getting stronger and darker as they come towards the bottom of the card and that gives an illusion of depth. Now to enhance that illusion of depth you just work with the iron across those bands of horizontal work making vertical lines and this pushes the horizontal stuff further behind so it's now definitely behind and you can load the arm with colour like this off a block that you've got sitting by your work area and as you deposit that then the colour is much stronger so you can actually put fresh wax into the painting you don't have to always just use the colours that are always there 
using this like um, the edge of a palette knife, I guess. And this builds up uh, better dimension, gives detail to the foreground, sort of definition. Now the stylus is a heated low heat tool and I'm going to make uh, a spot and then flick it out twice in one direction and then turn the card and flick it in another direction to create the wings for dragonfly. Let's do another one down here. And it's much easier to turn the card than it is to try and maneuver yourself around the painting. And then take um, something that will tone in, so I've used blue here to tone into the painting, and put the body on. So I've got a sort of a big one and a little one. And now uh, back to the flowers again. Remember, random is the thing that you're looking for here. Some bigger blobs, little blobs, and sort of just spatter them on. Uh, if you can go over dark areas, then you'll see that colour better, just for the illusion of the painting. And if you use some of the darker tone, this is the more um, purpley, a pinky colour, then that sort of gives the idea of shadowing uh, and enriches the foreground. So there we've got dragonfly and the flowers. Oh dear, I got a spot on there. Never mind, just use a scribing tool and scrape it off very gently. Um, and then when all that's done, make your tissue pad and lightly polish from the lightest areas down over to the darker stuff. So that's our A5 painting done. Now let's move on to an A3 landscape. And to get started, roughly draw it out on some scrap paper, just to give an idea of where you're going. And then on the painting card, deposit from the iron the colours where you want them. But rather than trying to smooth it all together with the iron, this time we're using a hot air gun. This is an electric paint stripper. It can get very hot, so be careful when you're using this. But what you can see, the advantage of using it, is that as you blow the wax around, there are no iron marks. Now wrap the cable of the iron around your arm so that you can work freely and then load it, well as we did before in the last painting, with quite liquid wax and then smooth across to create your horizon. Remember to leave the light that you've created in the sky. This is a bit blown out by the lights in the studio. This box here is in order that we can have space underneath the card without having to hold the card and then I can put one hand under the card to support it whilst I'm dabbing on the darker colour for the foreground. And this helps to avoid getting all those iron marks that are so annoying. This is a tissue torsion for rubbing away wax and it's just the pure rubbing and the friction of that rubbing that creates enough heat to wipe the wax off to make the stream. So just gently work down and watch very carefully. Don't over rub this. You can see all the wax coming off. And here's a little tip. Before you start doing details, take a piece of tissue, make it into a little strip, and then slide that strip down into the front of the iron like this. So if you're using this type of iron, it stops blobs unexpectedly coming out onto your painting. Now this is a foxglove painting. So I've got two colours, the cerise um, red violet and the pink. And I'm just putting the iron in each one alternately, and then using the tip to create that triangular form. Another little tip, you can put uh, a piece of card on top of your painting and then rest waxes on that so nothing gets damaged when you're working inside a bigger picture. It's quite a useful technique. I'm just building up with different sizes of foxgloves and now craning in. So on that white stream, by craning in, I can sort of reflect colours that are in the rest of the picture, in the sky, in the foreground, and then rub them in with your finger to make them sort of smoothed and fudged in. Polishing, start again, lighter colour, working down over the main area of the picture. And this is just to sort of clean the thing up as we're going along. Now again with the stylus, random strokes, using pink here, which is the light colour, and spreading that around the picture um, and varying the shades so that you've got some light, some dark, and then a bit more colouring. We can uh, put in some more shadow areas and then sort of blend them in with the finger as we work towards our bigger picture. Fox gloves. So painting iron is one of the things you need. In the art set you get waxes and card, but you'll need bigger card than is in there to do these some of these pictures. The low heat stylus is a great tool, has different heads, and all of this is shown on the bigger picture DVD. Um, and you can always think about exploring ideas for your next lesson. But this was lesson four, get bigger with encaustic art.